After upgrading Ender 3s, I've got a bunch of these boards sitting around collecting dust. I'm going to show you how you can take a version 1.1.5 with built-in bootloader and program it with Arduino so you can build other electronic projects with it. Right here at Fill My Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. This video is also brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. Now these are actually 8-bit boards, so I'm going to use a little bit older version of Arduino, Arduino 1.8.18. Now to program these boards, you got to use the Sanguino board type. If you don't have that, go to the Boards Manager, and you can search for it. And once you find it, you can install those drivers for that board. I've got it installed here, but an older version, 1.0. There is an update, but I'm going to use this older one for this project. The other thing you want to do is make sure you select the right processor. For this, you need the 18 Mega 1284 at 16 megahertz. That's what's on these boards. For the first test, I'm going to run an example program under basics. It's the blink sketch. This flashes the LED that's built into an Arduino board. Only we're going to flash the LED that's on this Creality board. There is an LED on this board to control, and it's right up here by the LCD connector. It's LED 1. Now, I couldn't find an exact schematic for this board, but I found something really close from 2019 by a person named R. Reitel. And it's really close. I like what he did here. He reverse engineered it, and he shows the LED, which is connected to the beeper pin. So now we have to go up to the schematic of the chip and find beeper, and it says it's connected to port PA4. From there, I had to go into the pins underscore Arduino dot header file. Now, this thing was originally made in 2007, but it's been updated many times. Here in 2011, it was updated for the Sanguino. If I scroll down further, I find the layout of the microcontroller, and I find the PA4 pin at pin 36, and it's defined as digital pin 27. So the 27 is what we have to use in the Blink program. I created a new Blink program based on the Creality board, and I changed the definition to digital pin 27 for the LED. So this should flash the LED on the Creality board. So I clicked on the upload button, it compiles and sends it to the board, and now the LED is flashing on the Creality board right up there by the LCD connector. Next I wanted to try a switch, so I'm going to use the X-Stop connector and connect the push button switch. And I found the schematic for that, it's right here, connected to the X-Stop pin. The X-Stop pin goes to port PC2. So I go to the header document, PC2 is digital pin 18. I used the push button example program and reworked it for the Creality board. The switch pin is at pin 18, the LED is at 27. So now when the switch is pressed, it's going to light the LED and when I let go of the switch, the LED is going to go off. I wired a normally open momentary switch to a connector that fits right in the X-Stop connector. So I plug that in and now we're ready to test this out. I clicked on Upload, it compiled it, and sent it to the Creality board, so now let's see if my sketch works. And you can see when I push on a switch, the LED comes on, when I let go, it goes off. Next, I want to try the fan connector and see if I can control a fan from the momentary switch. I soldered a 2-pin connector to a 12-volt Creality fan and plugged it into the fan socket. The previous experiments could be powered from the USB connector, but for this one, I need external power. And rather than put 24 volts and I'm only running a 12 volt fan, I'm going to use a 9 volt battery. Now, I could have used a 24 volt fan and a 24 volt supply, but I wanted to show that you also have options to use a lower voltage. Here's the schematic. You can see it's powered by VMOT, which is the input power. And it's got this transistor that's going to be controlled by the fan pin, which is actually port B4. Port B4 is actually digital pin 4, so that's what I'll use in the sketch to control the fan. I'm going to use the same sketch that controlled the LED from the switch, only this time I'm going to connect it to digital pin 4, which is the fan. So it's going to operate the same. Press the button, the fan goes on, let go, and the fan goes off. Once again, click on Upload, it compiles it, sends it to the board, and let's test it. When I press the switch, the fan spins. When I let go, the fan stops. So it's working perfectly. So I just demonstrated digital input, digital output, and actually control of a fan. And there's a lot more on this board that I can do, and the schematic covers most of it. So if you want to see more, let me know in the comments below. If you want to make your own circuit boards, check out PCBWay.com. You can get 10 boards for 5 bucks plus shipping. So some people ask, how much is that? 
Well, through DHL, shipping to the USA for me is $19.81. So 20, just under $25, I can get 10 boards. That's pretty cheap. And if you're building something and want them to assemble it, they have three options. You can go turnkey, they supply the parts. You can supply the parts, or you can do a combo. They supply some, you supply the others. And they also offer them panelized, top and bottom side soldering. It's actually very affordable. I use them for some of my products. It's a great option. So check out PCBWay.com. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or buy a membership through Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.